Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 13 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using form collection object in MVC and its purpose. Please watch part 12 before proceeding with this video. In part 12, if you remember, we have implemented this create employee view. Notice the URL here, employee controller, create action. So within the employee controller, do we have create action method? Yes, we do. And notice that this controller action method is decorated with HTTP get attribute, meaning this controller action method will only ever respond to the get request of this URL. On the other hand, if I fill this form with some data, and then if I post this form, okay, do we really have a create action method within the employee controller which is going to respond to the post action? We don't. So obviously what is going to happen when I click this button, we get an error stating the resource cannot be found. And look at the HTTP status code 404, okay, which is nothing but the resource cannot be found. And it makes sense. Let's see how to fix this. So what do we actually want to do when we click on this button create? We want to take this employee data from this form and then save it to this database table tbl employee okay so obviously the first thing to do is to create a stored procedure so here i am creating a stored procedure the name of the stored procedure is sp add employee and obviously to add employee data to this table we have to have the input parameters you know for name gender city and date of birth but notice that we are not having an input parameter for id because id is an identity column which is going to be auto computed and the body of the stored procedure is very straightforward. All we are doing is we are inserting data into this table TBL employee into these columns. And where are the values for those columns coming from? In the form of parameters. Okay, so that's the stored procedure. That's the first step. And the next step is with an employee business layer, at the moment we only have this employee's property which is going to return all the employees that are present in TBL employee table. We also need a method you know, to save the employee data to that database table. And to do that, let's add a method. So I'm going to call this public. The return type is going to be void. And let's say add employee. So we give it the employee object. And this method is going to take care of saving that employee object to the database table. And to speed things up, I have the ADO.NET code already implemented here. So let me copy and paste that into our function. And if you look at the implementation, it's very straightforward. All we are doing here is reading the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string, we are building our SQL connection object. We are then preparing our SQL command object. So here we have the stored procedure that we just created SP add employee. And then we are specifying the command type as stored procedure. The next step is to obviously create the um, input parameters and add them to the command object. So here we have the name parameter and then gender, city, date of birth. Finally, we open the connection, execute the query, which should insert the given employee object to the database table. Okay, so that's the second change that we have to do, you know. Um, in our project employee business layer. All right, so the next thing is obviously, you know, when I click this button, we need a create action within the employee controller, okay, which responds to the post operation. So let's go to the employee controller and I'm going to make a copy of this create action and I'm going to decorate this method with the HTTP post attribute, meaning this controller action method is going to respond to the post operation. Okay, so obviously when we click this button, what should happen? We should harvest the values that are present in this form, okay, and then pass them on to our add employee method within the business layer. So add employee method is going to take the business object, you know, the employee business object, okay. And to do that, obviously, you know, this method needs to receive, you know, the form values. And to do that, I'm going to introduce a parameter here, form collection. So we have the form collection there. So what is this form collection going to contain? So when I click this button, you know, whatever data that is present on this form, you know, this form collection object is going to receive them in the form of key value pairs. Okay, so if I want to retrieve, for example, let's say I want to print all the keys and their values, uh, you know, that are present on this form. How do I do that? 
you can simply use a for each loop so for each string key in form collection object dot there is a property called all keys and look at what is that property returning it is returning a string array so we are looping through all keys actually let's write the key there so key is equal to and then let's add a space as well and then we want the value for that key so response dot write so we have the form collection object and let's look at that to retrieve the values from the form collection we can either use an integral indexer or the name of the key okay I'm going to use the key name there so I'm going to pass the key name which is going to return the value okay and then let's put an HTML break there so that every key pair value will be returned in its own line all right with this change let's go ahead and run this and see what we get as the output so what we are basically doing we are looping through each key within that form collection object and then we are printing the, the key name itself and the value from the key so let me run this and navigate to the employee index view create new let's populate that with some sample data and let's click on this create button look at that I get the key as name and the value is Venkat within that key is gender value is male key is city value is London and key is date of birth and the value is whatever we have entered into that form okay so basically we are using this form collection object to retrieve the keys and the values okay so now if we have to persist the entered employee data to a database table all we need to do is retrieve data from this form collection object pop create an employee object and then pass it on to add employee method of this employee business layer and that's it let's do that so within this create employee method I mean action method I'm going to create a new employee object let's call it employee and let's specify the employee dot name so where do we get the employee object I mean employee name from from form collection and just to speed things up I have this code already typed here so let me copy this code and paste that right here so we, we are taking the name from the employee object I mean from the form collection and then populating the name property of the employee object similarly gender city and date of birth now form collection re returns you know if I specify the key it returns the data or the value within that um, key in the form of a string now here date of birth is date time so we need to convert that to date time okay so we have the employee object and all we need to do now is create an instance of your employee business layer so employee business layer let's call it employee business layer is equal to new employee business layer and then this employee business layer has got add employee method okay so we need to pass the employee object and this method will then take care of you know persisting the data that's present in that employee object to the database table okay and once that is done what we need to do we need to redirect the user back to the index view I mean index action method so that we can see the newly added employee and to do that I'm going to use you know a function redirect to action and to which action we want to redirect the user specify the name it's the index action that is present in the employee controller which is going to list um, all the employees that's it let's go ahead and run this so let's navigate to employee create view and then let's populate with some data and let's click on create look at that the new employee is added okay now 
look at this code this looks quite redundant and boring code so do we really have to write this code every time you know let's say here if you look at this form it's a very simple form I have four fields let's say there's a huge form with like uh, 10 15 or 20 fields now this is monotonous and redundant code so do we really have to do this um, you know code of, of retrieving data from the form and then populating the business object and then sending it over um, to to our you know business layer do we really have to do that in MBC no that's the job of model binders in MBC we'll discuss about model binders in our next video session on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day